Here goes a short history on comics and the, during these few minutes I'm going to talk about comics basically in the UK and the US. Uh, if you want to look at, for instance, Japanese comics, manga, uh, there's the, different, the history looks very much different. So this is basically for the UK and the US. So comics uh, takes its beginning in uh, kind of humor magazines during the 19th century in Britain. Uh, magazines to criticize society and, and do satire. Um, and also in the US, um, newspapers started to have like daily comic strips. So that's sort of the beginning of comics as we know them. Uh, so these are some, some early examples of how the comic strips could look like in newspapers. This is the Yellow Kid, one of the earliest, and also Jeff and Matt. If you look like this, you can find it if you look it up on the internet. So early examples of comics. Um, so it started out as like humor strips, and then it moved onward a bit to drama and adventure. And during the 1930s, uh, we actually met Superman for the first time. This is sort of a starting point for comics, maybe more as we know them. Uh, so with Superman came the whole uh, superhero genre. Uh, and the time period is called the, uh, the golden age of comics. So comics became very popular and uh, Marvel and DC Comics developed a lot of the superheroes that we recognized and use still today, like Superman, like Batman, like Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, I'm actually looking at my slip of paper here, Spider-Man, X-Men, Iron Man, basically all the man, uh, Hulk, Thor, Captain America, etc. Uh, a lot of these characters developed during this time period, the golden age of comics. Um, and why superheroes became so popular is probably because it was the time around the Second World War and people were in desperate need of a superhero, so the idea was quite appealing. And also the time period after the Second World War with the Cold War, sort of super creepy cold conflict between the uh, US and Russia with the constant threat of at atom bombs and nuclear wars. Um, so people were probably in need of the concept of heroes and, and also fantasy. So um, comics were a very like pop culture uh, market, uh, mass culture. So it wasn't viewed as like proper literature or proper books. It was more lowbrow, as they say. Um, and you could find uh, also, uh, you could find of course superhero stories, but you would also find like romance and Western crime, horror uh, and humor uh, if you looked at comics genres. During the 60s and 70s, there was sort of an underground movement uh, who wanted to create more complex, um, complex stories uh, in the comic book uh, format and also, you know, comics for, for adults specifically. Um, so there was a sort of development in, within the medium. Um, and during, I think probably one of the sort of important moments is when Will Eisner, a very famous uh, comic book creator, he uh, released uh, a book called A Contract with God in 1978 and he named it a graphic novel. So he was the one who introduced the concept of a graphic novel. And a graphic novel is uh, basically a comic, comic book um, uh, instead of just uh, buying, you know, um, the magazines, uh, they're compiled into a book, that's so something uh, a bit longer. Um, and during the 1980s, there was a lot of groundbreaking uh, work being uh, published within the comic book slash graphic novel uh, medium. Some of the more famous uh, are uh, Mouse, uh, which is about um, the Holocaust and the Second World War. Um, the Watchman, which was a, which is a quite um, advanced and quite different superhero team story. Uh, the For Vendetta, also by Alan Moore, uh, is a, about a dystopian England based on, uh, well, inspired by the, the the rule of Margaret Thatcher in the nineteen eighties. The Sandman is um, a compilation of fantastic stories. Um, very much based in Western literary history and all types of religions and mythology. It's quite advanced, both you know, language-wise and, and illustration-wise. Uh, and Batman had sort of a revival with the Batman, uh, the Dark Knight Returns, and other uh, albums um, like that, who dealt more with like the dark sides of 
of Batman and, and things like that. So that's some of the important graphic novels that was published during the 80s and sort of moved the, the, the medium um, onwards and developed it into something more complex. Uh, and now if you look at like comic books or graphic novels, uh, they can basically be about anything. It's it's sort of just a definition of, of uh, the way to combine um, language and art. So the written and the, the illustrated. Uh, so you can read um, you can read comics or graphic novels that that's are about very very different subjects and in different genres. Um, they can be you know sad stories uh, based on true stories. It could be fantasy or science fiction or horror. Graphic novels can be anything basically. So that's what we're going to talk a bit about the next time. Uh, but this was sort of an introduction to uh, the medium of comics or uh, graphic novels. And um, today, of course, we can see it's very much influenced the movie business because there was a, there's a lot of TV series and movies being based on comics. Walking Dead, for instance, TV series. Uh, X-Men movies, there are plenty of them going around. The Avengers. Uh, but also uh, a bit more like uh, drama stuff like Percy Police, which is about the, the revolution and uh, war in Iran. And also uh, Blue is the warmest color, uh, really um, became a very like high-priced movie based on uh, a graphic novel. So comics can be basically anything. <laughs> so this was the introduction for comics. Thank you.